and he's on the force and been working there for years and years, 20 years or something like that. He'll tell you a little bit about it, and the Lord called him to preach, and he is pastor in a Baptist church over in Jacksonville, Florida now. Brother, come ahead. Well, first of all, I just, I'm just so grateful that Brother Pete... Oh, Brother Pete, I just, your, your grace is so good, I tell you. You know, both, most of the places that I go, they just don't have enough grace to have me in, and they make me so mad I could just squeeze a grape. And I, oh, Brother Pete, you're so gracious. I, I thought about just having you and your wife come up here after I built a little altar of song books, you know, and I was going to talk about the right foundation, brother, and... I was going to have you and your wife come up and have everybody hug you and tell you how much they love you. Hey, brother, I'm just kidding, brother. <laughs> hey, man, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen anybody run Brother Pete out of a church, man? Hey, brother, I thought you said the best way to take a whipping was to sit down and take it. Hey, man. I don't want y'all to get too carried away. I had to do that because I'm scared slapped to death. I'd rather kick a door down right now than to be standing up here. Of course, the reason that for that is is some of y'all don't realize you, you don't see what I see and what some of these preachers see when they when they stand up here. See, we we see we see people's souls dangling out over hell, and we see eternal rewards burning up in a fire. And see, you can't see that sometimes because you got so much stuff in between you and him. And so you don't understand that it's time for serious business when the preacher steps up here. And that's one of the reasons I get a little nervous and my palms get to sweating. I get used to kicking indoors, amen? I, I, that don't bother me anymore because I know exactly what I'm doing, exactly where I'm going, and exactly how I'm going to do it. And if I'm going to have to do something bad and kill somebody, I ain't got no problem. I know what I'm going to do. You step up in a pulpit, especially one like this right here, you never know what God's going to do. And it's a little bit frightening. It's a little bit frightening. We hope it will be a blessing to you this morning and a help to you. Take your Bible, if you will, and turn to Matthew chapter number 27. Matthew chapter number 27. I want to look briefly this morning at the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a man this man called Jesus. He was able to take an awful lot. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 27, verse number... 27, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him, and they put on him a scarlet robe, and when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they spit upon him, and they took the reed, and they smote him on the head. That ain't no little piece of wheat there that they smacked him with. Malachi will tell you what that is. It's a rod. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him and put his own raiment back on him and led him away to crucify him. Father, we ask your blessings upon this message this morning, Lord. I just ask that you'll give me the special unction of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you'll fill me up, Lord, that you'll allow him to see Jesus this morning. God, I ask you help him to see what you did for us on the cross. God, I help that, ask that you'll just open up their hearts and blow the wax out of their ears this morning, Lord, that you'll help them to, to be able to receive what's preached this morning. God, that nothing will come out of my mouth that would be inappropriate, Lord, that would make you ashamed or embarrassed. God, that I might be a, a witness and a testimony and a pure vessel. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, number, verse number 14, turn your Bibles over there. I want you to see something here and try to get a little bit of a, of a different picture. Colossians chapter 2. In verse number 14, you're very familiar with this. The Bible says this is what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took out the way, nailing it, the ordinances, to his cross. And you say, well, now, wait a minute, Brother Dave. He didn't nail anything to the cross. A lot of people try to take that and say, oh, well, that was the thing that was over his head. No, the handwriting of ordinances was contained in Jesus Christ. He is talking about nailing himself to Christ. The Bible says repeatedly all through the Bible, but the Bible says in the beginning was the 
Word. The Bible says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Bible says repeatedly, the Scripture saith. And the point that I want to make to you today is, is literally speaking, is this not really Jesus Christ Himself? I mean, contained in these pages is the Word of God. Amen? This is the mind of God. If you want to know God, what do you do? You pick up a King James Bible, and you say, I want to know the Word of God. So you pick up that old black book, that old, as you all called it, 66 caliber, right? And you pick that thing up, and you, you, you say, boy, I got that thing down, and that's the Bible, and that's God's mind. Right? You all going to have to help me a little bit this morning, okay? This is the Word of God. So, in effect, it is God. Do you really believe that all the words of God are pure words? Amen. Tried in the furnace of fire, furnace of earth, uh, seven times. Amen? And forever thy word is settled where? Yeah. Well, but where's Jesus at? You getting the picture? So, in actuality, is that not Jesus Christ? Amen. That book right there? Well, the Bible says that they did some unusual things. You know, I, I, I realize that beliefs determine actions, right? Your beliefs determine your actions. I tell you what, I thought this place was sort of loose. I mean, am I, am I off on the wrong base here? I, I can't stand a hypocrite, can you? If you believe this book right here, you'd live that book right there. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that they took Jesus... And they stripped his robe off. Oh, what's the matter? Uh, you, it's okay if we do that with the Catholics, Mary, ain't it? You know, throw a rope around her and drag her around. Huh? What's the matter? Listen to me. Every time you don't live by what you preach, you strip the robe off of Jesus Christ. What's the matter? That's a book. That's Jesus Christ. Who do you think put him on the cross? Every time you strip the robe off of Jesus, and you know what you do? You put on your own robe. And your own robe is a robe that says something like, Ichabod, the glory hath departed. The Bible says that one of you brothers got one of them big bandanas. One of you brothers got a handkerchief. Amen. What did the Bible say? The brother, the, the Bible says that what they'd done was is they toted him down yonder and, and they put him in the, in the thing and they blindfolded him, didn't they? I don't know if this thing's going to fit. Didn't they blindfold him? Boy, it's quiet in here now. Oh, boy, it's quiet in here now. Oh, a lot of liberty here, Brother Dave. Yeah, preach, Brother Dave. Bless God. You know what makes me puke? You talk about having a bad attitude. I got a bad attitude towards Christians who don't live what they preach. Who run around, King James Bible believer, Brother Dave. I believe the Bible. Oh, you do, huh? The Bible says they blindfolded him, and then they smote him. And they smote him. Well, how do I smote him, Brother Dave? I don't know. Let's, let's talk for just a minute what you do in your living room at your house. You know, when you, when you turn on that box, I've got to get a, a note or two up here because I wrote something down that will help you to understand how you smote him. You know, you've got that box in your house. You say, well, Brother Dave, we've heard all that, all that preaching on the box and the TV and all that other kind. We don't need to hear that here, Brother Dave. That's why you still have it. You're mocking him. You're a stinking hypocrite. You said you did not like hypocrites. Amen? You know why people don't like this King James Bible? Because you don't live this King James Bible. You talk about believing this King James Bible, but you don't live this King James Bible. You know what? It just tore your guts out when I pulled the cover off of that thing. <gasps> well, at least I'm using mine. Yours just sits on the dresser. You see, what y'all do with yours is y'all leave it setting up there real pretty for a while and you'll let the roaches and the dust eat it all up. Amen? What you'll do is, is you'll go in and you'll, Amen, brother, preacher. Amen, that's good preaching. Amen, that's good. And you'll go home and you'll kick your wife and you'll scream at your wife and you'll beat your young uns and you'll snatch that, you know, God, can you see in my house? You got him blindfolded, do you? I know some of you, y'all go over there and slide that thing under a magazine so he can't see you. Right? Let me tell you about TV just a little bit. Just a, just a brief moment here. Television's 50 hours a week in most homes. Average child watches 23 hours a week. 
Not my kid, Brother Dave. You're a liar. Age 16, a child has seen 33,000 murders, 200,000 acts of aggression. Ten, uh, by age 10, they'll see 9,000 sexually suggestive, suggestive scenes. The importance of, or the impact of television, most things are caught. They are caught, not taught. And television is highly contagious, especially for young minds. Standards of morality and normality, what is considered normal behavior, is modeled day in and day out as long as the television is turned on. The birth of TV was a magical event foreshadowing its satanic significance. The first commercial broadcast was aired on Valpurgis Day, the second highest holy day in Satanism besides Halloween. April the 30th, 1939. People don't need to go to church anymore. They get their morality on the television, Anton LaVey's Satanic Bible. Direct quote. Let me tell you about Valpurgis Day. That was a nun. And they lifted her up because they put her in a rock and some oil came out and they built a church over that and they made her a saint and all that other kind of stuff. And it says that uh, they commemorated her at various times, but principally on May the 1st, the, her day taking the place of an earlier pagan festival, continuing the most important pagan festival of all the year, the grand climax, climax of the spring equinox. The eve of May has been memorialized as the night that all the demons, specters, afreets, and banshees would come forth and hold their wild, wild revels. You, you think it's just by chance that that first commercial broadcast was on there on that particular day. And all them things come out over your box. And all your kids are having problems. Often television becomes a surrogate parent for the latchkey kids and parents who don't care. The networks are full of sex violence and become the children's role model to determine their behavior. What fills a person's mind usually comes out in their behavior. Is television all bad? Obviously not. Like most things, value, its value, it can be used for good or evil for building up or tearing it down. The television is the devil's Bible. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. This is our Bible. You put anything wrong in it, and it, it makes it impure. Well, now the TV is just the exact opposite. You put just a little bit of good in it, and for the Satanist, that spoils everything. But you see, some of you guys around here talk about really following God, really worshiping God. Why don't God do with me what he's done with Brother Roberts and give me a touch of God like that? Because you ain't got the guts for it, Sonny. You know what? You can't even bring your TV down here to the altar and leave it. Oh, yeah, listen, man. You want to have a meeting around here? You want to have a meeting around here? You know what you need to do? Take the blindfold off of Jesus and just let him see exactly what you do. Behind closed doors. Can he see me over there catching that? Huh? He can't, he can't, he's blindfolded. He can't see that. He can't see me having that beer. He can't see the way I treat my young'uns. Right? Isn't that what it says? The Bible says that they mocked him. They, they plucked his beard. Your Bible says in, in the book of 1 Timothy, we won't turn there now, the Bible says that you're to read your Bible daily. Well, let's just pluck that one out. That ain't no good. The Bible says that you're to study to be silent. Well, that ain't no good. I don't like that one either. Let's read over here a little further. Uh, women are to be subject to their own husband. I don't like that one either. I'd rather submit myself to somebody else's husband. The Bible says, wives submit to your own husbands, not husbands make your wife submit. You see, husbands, if you were a little more like Jesus, your wife would bow down and worship you. Genesis chapter 3, you know what the Bible says? Genesis chapter 3, part of the woman's curse is, is that her heart would be turned towards her husband. You know why? Because if you look like Jesus, he wants her to see Jesus in you, and he's turning them to her, to him. Husbands, love your wives as Christ did what? And gave him, and gave him something for it. That's what the perversion says, right? Gave himself. You know what your problem is, men? You can't give yourself to your wife. Why don't you get out that cat of nine tails? Well, Brother Dave, bless God, I'm working my butt.
butt off. I provide all the time. I provide all the comforts of home. You jackass, you don't provide nothing for your wife except monetary measures. You're supposed to lead that woman in spiritual things. You're supposed to lead that woman and give her an inheritance as well as those kids. And you ain't no Jew before the cross. You're supposed to leave her a spiritual inheritance that will last her for all eternity. How come you're so busy out there working? I'll tell you why. The love of money is the root of all evil. Well, now, Brother Dave, you know, he that provideth not for his family is worse than an infidel. Did it say just monetary? No, sir. That's right. You know what? You don't love your wife. You don't love your wife because you're not trying to give her something. You're not trying to give her something spiritual that'll last her for eternity. No, you're not. You're going to give her something. You just want her to submit, 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 submit. You submit, bless God. Proverbs 31, woman. You know how Jesus Christ taught people to submit to him? He went around all the time saying, I am Jesus Christ. I am the king. I am he that came to seek and to save. I am he that is to be the leader. I am he that is the king of all the earth. I created all of you. Is that what he said? Jesus Christ had all power, all authority, and all rights to use that power and authority. And he stands before authority, and he stands before Pilate and goes, You ain't got no guts, sonny. You ain't got no guts. Now, before you get ready to come running up here, you know, and, you know, uh, bless God, Brother Dave, I'm all, you know, you're tearing up my book. No, I'm tearing up your heart. You want to know why that Word of God right there is a mockery to your kids? You want to know why your kids live like the devil? You want to know why you stink like a dead possum in the sunshine? You want to know why you stink? Because you don't live what you claim to live. That's why. Bless God, my children are a rebellious bunch of kids. You rebel against that book right there. And every time you do, you know what you do? You just yank out that cat of nine tails. You know what the, you know what the Romans did with the cat of nine tails? The, the way they got around it, they only whip them 39 times. But the Romans are like us. Amen? The Romans are like us. You know how they Gentiles. And so they got real divisive. They said, well, we can't whip them but 39 times, but if we add nine or 12 tails to this thing, you know what we can do? Boy, we can do some damage. We can cut that thing to ribbons. Little bits of flesh, just a little at a time. Just tear that thing up. Oh, not me, Brother Dave. I believe the King James Bible is the Word of God. I thought belief determined actions. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Yeah, Study to show thyself approved unto God. Right. Just tear it up. Right? Yes, now, wait a minute, folks. You said this was Jesus Christ, did you not? Are you sure you don't have him down in the basement right now whooping him? Are you sure it ain't your fist that's... Who hits you, Lord? Who hits you, Lord? Who hits you, Lord? That's exactly what you're doing. The Bible says that if you love him, you will keep his word. What's your problem? Why is it that when the preacher sat... You know why they don't preach on TV no more? Because they got one in their living room, amen? Well, now, Brother Ruckman, he does, he does videos now. And it's okay for me to watch videos. I'll bet you if you ask that man that if them videos are causing you to watch that box more than getting that book, you know what I bet he'll tell you? I bet you... I bet you... Now, I hadn't talked to him, I, but I bet you he'll tell you to throw them videos in the garbage can. You know who the most of them videos are for? People that can't get to church or won't get to church. They ain't for you. You're supposed to know better. Let me, let me ask you a question, men. I mean, you know, you stop and think about it. What does it say over there in 1 Timothy? The women are to be shamefaced and not with the broidered hair and, and they're not to deck themselves out with gold and all that other kind of right. What does it say? Yeah, well, no, I... Wait a minute, Brother Dave. Who are you trying to impress? Set your affections on things down here on this earth because we love this earth more than anything else. And bless God, I know some of y'all love this earth more than anything else. You know why I know that? Because now you've decided to take a Bible, Jesus Christ, and tie him up with your stinking patriots movement. What are you doing fighting for this ground you are standing on? 
Bless God, guns and guts and God and gooks and whatever we got to have. Bless God, everybody get them a gun. Amen. I appreciate it. Go blow the guy's fool head off. But let's talk spiritual for just a minute. He don't know where he's going. You do. Amen. Amen. You spiritual, huh? You what Jesus Christ do. Oh, bless God, I got the power and the authority. I got a ray gun to knock you on your butt, pilot. I'm glad he knew when to pull his gun. Boy, son, it's just, it's just eating all up. Good God Almighty. What am I, what's the matter? Am I tearing up one of your little icons, one of your little idols? What's the matter, man? I'm not tearing up nothing you don't tear up every day by not living it. Well, bless God, Brother Dave, we're founded on Christian print. You know why God ain't here in America no more? Because Christians ain't living it no more. And I wish you'd get your stinking nasty paws off of it and let them just go ahead and take it over because the quicker they take over, the quicker you'll repent. Oh, but no, brother, you want to take that sword and get in the flesh, boy. Hey, let's get the flesh, man. The flesh, the Bible says. The Bible says. The Bible says. Yes, sir. Let's get them, Brother Dave. And, and the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 6. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So what happened was that the devil's down there going, look at that fool. <laughs> He's down there preaching from his pulpit, and all he preaches about is patriotism, patriotism, fight the government, fight the government. Who cares about the queer in the White House? He ain't my king anyhow. A little nervous laughter. <laughs> Y'all are all there trying to sneak a peek at Brother Ruckman. Brother, where'd you find this feller at? <laughs> Brother, do you know he was going to come in here? Do you know he, you know what he told me at breakfast this morning? Brother, whatever comes in your mind, you just help yourself. Yeah. Oh, they can take it, Brother Dave. Don't worry about nothing. I'm saying to myself, Brother, did you set me up? <laughs> man. Listen, man, the Bible tells you that you're not to wrestle against flesh and blood. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, Paul on epistle, amen, right? Apostle of the Gentiles, right? Yeah, amen, I ain't no hyper dry cleaner and all that other mess, but, but ain't what it says. Paul says in Romans 13, all authorities are deigned to God. You don't know what persecution's about, sonny boy. When Paul wrote that epistle, there was a king on there that was burning people. And he said, submit. You know where the true test of character comes? When you submit because it's right, not because you like it. Well, Brother Dave, I don't believe we ought to pay taxes to a wicked government. Jesus did. Hey, Pete. How you doing? Good. Your master pay tribute? Well, uh, I need to ask him about that. The Lord says, yeah, Pete, go down there and get that fish and pay my tribute and yours too. To the Roman government that took him out and hung him on the cross? It was me and you put him on the cross, sonny boy. You know what he could do? He submitted himself to sin for me and you. He didn't have to. You want to talk about the ultimate in submission? He's got a wife down here, the bride of Christ, amen? And God says, son, we ain't got to have we, we, Look, we can just create the whole thing and let them all go to hell. We'll create a whole new thing and who cares? We'll just blot that out and don't worry about it. Jesus says, well, I love her. It's kind of taken up in that story over there in, in, in the book of Exodus where you got the, the servant that goes to work for the other person. And they're both Jews and they're both on equal plane to begin with. I know you all all know the story. And what he does is he says, look, man, I'm, I'm destitute. There's something there that needs to be redeemed, so I'll come work for you. And so he works for him for six years. In the seventh year, he's supposed to be there. But while he was in captivity, while he was serving this other guy, you know who he met? He met him a wife that he didn't have before he came. And the Bible says over there that the way the law was written is, is if you wanted to leave, you could leave, but you had to leave your wife and kids there. But if you wanted to stay, Exodus says, if you love your master and your wife and your children, you can stay. And so God said, son, you've done your time and everything like that. Let's go ahead and leave her. And the Lord says, not my will but thine. I love you more than me. I'm willing to make myself a little lower, a servant, Isaiah. God says, well, what are you going to redeem? This woman I met while I was down here. God says, well, now, wait a minute, son. That's going to mean you're going to have to have an indelible mark put on you. Because you know what it says? They took the servant before the judges. 
and they punched a big hole in his ear. And every time that servant walked into town, that sun was shining through that ear, and everybody said, mm, boy, what a servant. He gave up everything. See, he could have been back equal again. But instead, he chose to be a servant. You know why? Because he loved his master, loved his wife, loved his children. God says, son, you don't know what you're saying. I'm going to have to punch you. What does it say when Jesus appears in a resurrected body? What does it say? He appears in a resurrected body. And what's showing? Holes in his hands in his... You ever wonder why them things are showing up there? I mean, everything else has been healed, right? I mean, you done plucked his beard and smited his back and tore him all to pieces, amen? And that what it says? But, but, the, but the nails are still there. Why, why is that? How are you going to know him when you get up there? Nail prints. You know why? Marks of a servant. Marks of a servant. He took the punch. His whole body was completely redone, but... Marks of a servant. How come you think them holes are still right there? He got punched. The Bible says that when that servant was punched, it was for ever until death. Well, how about that? Another interesting thing begins to happen. They, they get through and they put his robe back on him. And of course, you know what happens when they put his robe back on. Later on, they yank that robe back off again and it just peels the bark right off with it, man. I mean, it's just stuck. False repentance. False repentance. God, I really, I really do mean business, God. All my heart. I'm going to do right. You're like Ahab. You're like Ahab. ben -Hadad says, I'm going to take you over. He said, I surrender. All, all. ben -Hadad sends him the next day and says, Hey, hey, tell him we're coming to take all. Ahab says, whoa, 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 now wait a minute, I'll give you lip service, but I, <laughs> you know, don't ask me for the real thing. Huh? Yeah, y'all flood this altar boy, and oh God, oh God, oh God, and your kids go puke. And the people in Pensacola say, puke. He got right, why didn't he change? Well, I don't know, Brother Dave. Peel the robe off of him, and they they get him some nails. Take him out there. Better not hammer on that. I don't know if this is going to work with this baby hammer, but and Ro Roman soldiers they took him some nails and they laid him down and they excuse me, Lord, didn't mean to bump you. Be still. I won't drive all three of them in it. But you get the picture. Excuse me, Lord. <laughs> My sin put that nail in your hand. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was drunk in the flesh when I done it. Didn't know no better. Just sort of take it for granted, do you? When you don't live that King James Bible that you profess to love so much, bud, you crucify Christ. Oh, Brother Dave, it was my sin that hung him on the cross. Oh, Brother Dave, my sin put him there. I'm so grateful for the blood. <clears throat> Beliefs in action. You know what you do? No further revelation. You close up the Word of God. One percent of rebellion is a hundred percent rejection. You rebel against the Word of God, you're rebelling against Jesus Christ. Now, some of these fancy preachers, they can tell you all about how that thing works, but that's His Word, is it not? And a man's known by His Word, is it not? And so when you claim to live it and love it and believe it, you know what you do when you don't live it? 
listen, man, it don't matter what you do to Christians that are trying to do right. You know what you do? You put him back up there and say, yeah, death, it really wasn't everything. Then you do a funny thing. Some of you stinking church members and some of you people that claim to love God and deny God and all that, and you see him hanging up there and the preacher just convicts your heart. Oh, yeah, man, he just convicts you with that preaching of that Bible and the Lord and the Holy Spirit just gets in there and he begins to work on you. He begins to twist and he begins to turn. And one of you says, He ain't dead yet! There's still something up there! Break his legs or something! Kick something out! Do something, man! It's something still up He's still wiggling. Do something. Go get you a spear. Oh, I know that was a long spear they had. You find your place right there in his ribs where he's vulnerable, and you just right to his heart. Right to his heart. When the Holy Spirit comes to you and convicts you of sin, you grab that spear when you reject Christ and you ram it in his heart. You break his heart. All these people tell me, oh, Jesus Christ, he was up on there and his heart broke and all the other kind of stuff. Man, his heart was broken or he'd have never gone to that cross. The Roman soldier stuck a hole in it. A Gentile. Paul's over there talking to the church at Corinth and he's speaking about the Macedonian church he was just in. And he says, you stinking fleshly church, peacock perversion. He says, them people over there in Macedonia are poor and they're blind and they don't have nothing and they brought all they had. You know how he was trying to get the church at Corinth, the fleshly church, to get spiritual? It says they gave first of their billfold, right? Now don't get nervous and roll over on your billfold. It says they gave first of themselves. Well, what is your problem? I want to be spiritual, especially this weekend, Brother Dave. Oh, God, I want to be spiritual. They gave first of themselves before everything else happened. Brother Dave, I just don't quite understand the message you're trying to preach to me. What part don't you understand? The whole point of my message is, is you profess to believe it, but your actions show me you don't. Every word of God is pure, Brother Dave. Bless God, I'm a Bible believer. Why don't you act like it? Why don't you act like it? Just what exactly is it that causes you to do that? Who's Jesus Christ? You ever been spit on before? Spittle is one of the most vile, nasty human things that can ever be done. Over 600 spit on him. Hang on the cross, Jesus. I could care less. Just sit on the book stand, Jesus. I could care less. Just stay over there in the corner, Jesus. I could care less. Every time you make an excuse, you're hammering a nail. I don't care, Jesus. I'll do it next week, Jesus. I'll get right next week, Jesus. I ain't in no hurry, Jesus. In my time, not your time, Jesus. Lord, I don't want to submit to that old guy, man. I tell you what, he's rude, crude, nil mannered. Uh huh. You're going to stand in front of Jesus Christ and say, So was Pilate. What's your problem? What's your problem? Bad attitude, bad just blow out. I got a bad attitude towards independent, fundamental, missionary, Bible-believing Christians that stink! You stink! You're a stench in the nostrils of God! You stink more than the worldly Christian, I mean, within the worldly, fleshly sinner who don't know no better! 
You got Bible. You got Jesus. You know better. You know what you need to do? You need to get you a big old flesh hook, and you need to stick it in that thing and be like that Levitical priest, and you need to drag it up here to the altar. And your skin says, whoa, I don't like that. And you need to stick it in there again and pull it back, and as that fire gets hot, and it gets hotter, and it gets hotter, and that skin begins to shrink, and that flesh draws up, you need to say, come in, get back in the fire. He did. He did. He did. Well, Brother Dave, I got step young and I just don't believe I ought to have to love him like I ought. You know, Brother Dave. Well, let's see. Jesus Christ was God's only son. And he loved me enough not to send me to hell and send his own son instead. Oh. Suck the wind out of your scales. There it sails there, sonny boy. Tough Christian, are you? I can get the roughest, Brother Dave. Just, just lay it on, Brother Dave. Listen, man. Let that priest that's in you, Jesus Christ, bring you to the altar. Now listen to me. In a lot of Bible-believing churches, we we're real good at working on the outside, you know? You know, oh, well, bless God, Brother Dave. I'm going to give this up. I'm going to give that up. I'm going to give this up. I'm going to give that up. And it leaves a big old cavity. It says work out, out, out your salvation. That way there ain't no cavities. The more you feed him, the more he grows and pushes that stuff out. No cavities. No room for rottenness. But you see, the Bible says over in the book of Leviticus, you know what it says? It took a priest who had to have everything pure and perfect to prevent, present that sacrifice. See, your problem is, is you present the sacrifice in the flesh. You tell, you know, everybody's looking at me, oh, Brother Dave, they know I've been smoking, drinking, cussing, chewing, doing all them things, not reading my Bible, not studying, not praying, not fasting. I've been working too much. I've been doing everything I shouldn't be doing, Brother Dave, and I need to just take it down there at the altar and get right. And the Lord's going, no, wait, 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 wait. Let me take it. Let me take it. Let me take it. Let me take it. I'm pure. I'm perfect. I'm the one that's got the blood. Let me take that blood for you. Let me go up there. Take me. I'm the only one that can shield you from God's wrath and his indignation. I'm the only one that can give you the fire suit. Let me take you. No, no, wait a minute now, God. If I let you take me, <laughs> appreciate that, Jesus. But see, if you take me, then i got to try to do right. I'd rather take it myself because that way i got room to repent, you know, later on again and, and then play yo-yo. That's what some youngs do. You yo-yo back and forth up here. And it's a mockery. It is a mockery. It's a joke. Just driving hell. I ain't much on fancy fanfares. Can I get somebody to play the piano? Just a little liberty here to ask you a question. Have you taken... Can I borrow that brother? I promise I won't tear it up. I'm pretty well wore out. Have you crucified Christ? He died on the cross for you. What, what, what have you done? Have you, have you ever, ever seen it like that? You make a mockery out of it. You profess to believe something, but, but listen, man, you can tell people you believe it all day long. If you don't live it, bless God, you know what? They think it's a joke. Yes, yeah. How about it? Come on down to the altar and let that priest make a sacrifice for you. Don't whip him again. Don't whip him again. Don't drag that whip across him and yank it across that flesh. Come on, Christian. Come on, get out here and let the priest make a sacrifice for you. Come on, Christian. He'll forgive you. He'll take that blood and make a pure sacrifice for you. Let it be true repentance. What are you laying on the altar? What are you laying on the altar? Find you a place, sis. Just get down right there in the aisle. Just so the Lord knows you're getting bit doing business. Anybody else? Anybody else?
I will just tire a while in prayer and let some of you pray a little while. I beseech you, brother, by the mercy of God, to present you a body, your body, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. these are praying, let's have the congregation stand and sing 375, while these are praying, 375, I gave my life for thee, 375. Let's sing it. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed. That thou might ransom be and quick can from sing it out, sing it out, folks, sing it. What hast thou given for me? Father's house of light, my glory in circle throne, I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and 